Hillary Clinton seems to have survived her near-death experience, but was that just postponing the inevitable? Well, if you define the inevitable by who's going to be ahead in the delegate race, then I think we are. I think at this point it's, it's fairly obvious and fairly clear that Senator Clinton is going to be behind Senator Obama when it comes to the delegate race. But that is not the entire story. What is important now is another class of delegates, the superdelegates, who are not elected directly by the states. They are the people that are being played to right now, even more important than the voters of Pennsylvania, which, which has a primary seven weeks from now, are these superdelegates. And these are the folks that are, that are really going to end up holding the balance in this nomination fight from here on out. So I do think at this point, Senator Clinton will not catch Senator Obama, but you're hearing her make a different argument. It's about electability. It's about second-guessing the party's choice. She wants to instill enough doubt about Senator Obama between now and the convention that these superdelegates start to come to her side. Paul Krugman, what do you think? How do you see the race shaping up? I have no idea. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll let the, the delegate counters uh, do their thing. I mean, what's interesting to me is that um, both Democratic candidates have large grassroots support. I mean, you know, it was one thing when it was <clears throat> Clinton was the establishment candidate and, and it was all... Um, uh, you could claim it was just you know historical momentum and, and money. Now she's uh, you know behind in money, behind you know largely written off by a lot of political commentators. And it turns out that there are a lot of people who really really like her, and she can still pull off big election victories. Um, I mean that's just impressive. You've got a lot of enthusiasm for both candidates on the Democratic side. But do you have any thoughts as to maybe what happened with Barack Obama? He seemed to have all this momentum, and then it just uh, it seemed to fizzle. Any I'm not there? sure that momentum really exists uh, in the minds of you know real people, as opposed to to, to you guys, uh, right? <laughs> it's uh, um, and look, uh, there was a Ohio in particular is a state which has big economic problems. Uh, Clinton has, un by and large, been more successful at making the case that she's the person who's really going to address the anxieties of, of working Americans, not dramatically so, but somewhat. Uh, Obama tried to say, I I'm the anti-NAFTA candidate, and that kind of backfired on him because it, wasn't, uh, it, it was a bit of a cynical ploy and it, it came out that way. So, uh, you know, this was bread and butter issues and uh, Hillary came out ahead on that. Robert Bluey, how about you? What do you think? I know you're enjoying well, this. I, yeah, I, I certainly am, and I think uh, most Republicans probably are enjoying the fight that's taking place and, and that will take place over the next seven weeks. But I think Paul makes a very important point. I think what Hillary Clinton did in Ohio and Texas in the closing days was really make the case that she was the better leader. And I think that that's probably why she came out ahead uh, pretty significantly in Ohio, I, I might add. So, you know, I think it's going to focus on those issues. I think she's going to continue to hammer away on the eco economic issues where she sees a clear advantage. Uh, if Obama has the advantage on the war because of where he came out, and, uh, in his support way back in 2002 against the Iraq war, I think Hillary probably uh, trumps him on the, uh, on the free trade and, uh, and economy. Again, Rick, where do you think, uh, you know, what's going to happen now uh, going forward? Well, hey, look, we're, we're, in a, we're in uncharted territory. This is not something that any of us thought would happen. Now, a lot of people thought this would get wrapped up on Super Tuesday a month ago. Then it was going to be about March 4th. Now it looks like we're into April 22nd and maybe beyond. I think what's going to happen, though, is, is either Senator Obama is able to bounce back from that and really make a counterargument that's very strong to Senator Clinton, keep the superdelegates coming to his side, or we're going to see a real sustained effort by the Clinton campaign to continue to instill doubts in, in voters' minds and make the case more broadly that it doesn't matter what the delegate count says, what matters is who can actually beat John McCain. We're seeing, hearing Hillary Clinton come out of the box and saying this is about matchups, this is about getting a Democrat who can win. These superdelegates that we're talking about, these, these party leaders, they want to have someone who can win. They want, at bottom, someone who can win. So it's going to take some congealing of this, of this group. It's a little bit frozen right now because, look, they're as perplexed as the rest of us about exactly what's going on. We've seen such mixed messaging from voters. Paul Krugman's right that, you know, it's us in the media that talks about momentum, but we really thought that Barack Obama had something going there. It may have been something unstoppable when he won 11 and then 12 contests in a row. That all came to an end when she picked up three big victories. Well, speaking of McCain, I mean, he's, he's finally uh, brushed aside uh, Mike Huckabee and, uh, you know, he's now uh, getting the endorsement of, uh, of uh, President Bush. How does he shaping up, I guess, for, for the general? Like, what, is, what does he do right now, and then how does he shape up for the general? Well, he's got seven weeks to make the case, at least seven weeks, to make the case straightforward uh, to Republican voters coming to the fold. That's the signal that we want to send uh, if you're John McCain in, in appearing with President Bush right now. President Bush is very unpopular with the public at large, but he's still popular with the Republican base. So he wants to say, look, the Republicans are, are coming together in sharp contrast to what's going on with the, on the Democratic side, of course. That's part of the messaging. And they want to make this about national security. So we heard that from his victory speech right off. I have a lifetime of experience that I will bring to the White House. Uh, I know Senator McCain has a lifetime of experience that he will bring to the White House. And Senator Obama has a speech he gave in 2002.
political comments you've made about his policies. But is it wise for a Democrat to say that a Republican is more ready to be president? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can do some interpretation on what she was saying there. But look, uh, I've actually been especially critical of Obama for adopting what I would call uh, Republican talking points on, on health care, on, on, uh, on Social Security. So, you know, fairness demands that I say, no, Hillary should, really shouldn't have said that. Uh, this is, after all, the odds are that Obama will be the nominee, despite yesterday's results. And uh, so, sure. Uh, hey, Robert, what do you think about the whole NAFTA flap and uh, um, NAFTA in general? John McCain has said that uh, NAFTA is a good thing. People in Texas and Ohio said not so good. Well, I, I think the Democrats' rhetoric doesn't match reality. I mean, for instance, if you look at Ohio, uh, NAFTA actually has done some tremendous things for, for the workers there. The two biggest uh, markets that Ohio exports to are Canada and Mexico. I mean, there's no denying that fact. I think that the attacks on, on the economy, uh, you know, Hillary and, uh, and uh, Senator Obama both want to, would, would, you know, undo the Bush tax cuts. Hey, but, I mean, but, but, that's, Robert, that's one, obviously... One second. Isn't, isn't the weak dollar playing into the exports, the increased exports? But no, no, no. I, don't get me wrong. I realize that free trade is an issue, but I don't think that backtracking on, on free trade is, is, is necessarily a, a solution to improving the, the economic situation in Ohio or Texas or anywhere else in America. And I think that the fact that, you know, uh, this is an issue that's playing out on the Democratic side is only, you know, exciting John McCain because he would love to have a debate on free trade. And I'm sure that John McCain, uh, you know, given his strong support of, of agreements uh, in Colombia and South Korea and other places that the Democrats are tying up in Congress, you know, bring it on, I think is what John McCain's message would be. I think the broader point that, that Robert's making here, and I think he, it's an accurate one, is that the longer this Democratic campaign goes on, the more opportunities you give Senator McCain for ammunition down the road. We're seeing the, we're, I think really in Ohio, it's fair to call what uh, Obama and Clinton both did was, was something of a pander. They really repudiated positions they've taken in the past in, in terms of talking about how NAFTA needed to be renegotiated, even saying they'd, they'd commit to canceling it if it didn't get renegotiated with, with the Canadians and the Mexicans. That's going pretty far, and that's a position, one of many that we're seeing develop in the course of this campaign, that just feeds into uh, the, the Republican machine down the road. Well, you know, good thing oh, we've got an economist say, on the panel. So, well, Paul, right. uh, well, well, I'd like to hear what your, your views of NAFTA. You know, of course, Ohio, uh, most of its exports go to Canada and Mexico. Most of everything goes to Canada and Mexico. They're right next door. Uh, Ohio has definitely been hurt by growing international trade. There's, no, there's really no question about that. So they're addressing a real anxiety. Now, actually talking about how we're going to rip up NAFTA, you know, it's not going to happen. And so there was a pander involved in that. But I think any time the conversation turns to the economy, this is to the Democrats' advantage. The fact of the matter is that they, you know, Bush uh, has, has presided over a pretty weak performance. And McCain has the great weakness of, of being somebody who has on repeated occasions saying, said he doesn't know much about economics and, uh, and then, you know, straight talker that he is, denying that he ever said such a thing. You know, if this is not a national security election, if this is a jobs, jobs, jobs election, McCain's in trouble. Well, one thing that that soundbite from Hillary also played into, though, is just some of the, the, the anti-Hillary that exists even within the Democratic Party. You've got Obama who said uh, on many occasions that his voters won't vote for Hillary. And again, I think it was kind of shown in the exit polling, just uh, the majority in both Texas and Ohio, saying that, uh, that Hillary's clamp campaigning and her tactics against Obama were unfair. Will the, how big, Rick, will that likability factor play into whoever the nominee is? Assume well, look, I mean, I think Obama's been very careful about how he's played this, and they haven't gone to the ultimate step, which is to start bringing up the scandals of the 90s in either implicit or explicit ways. They've been careful about how they've played it. It's been some coded language throughout this campaign. I think we may see that begin to change in the next seven weeks. The Obama campaign very clearly wants to remind people of the bad days that were associated with the Clinton years, and Democrats have mixed feelings about that, and so do, so do independents and Republicans as well. Hey, Robert, you have a preference? Who are you looking forward to uh, you know, now that you've got your own nominee? Well, I, you know, I, I mean, do, do I have, I, I, think, I think that basically what you're going to see over the next seven weeks is, you know, a, a hard-fought battle between uh, Senator Clinton and Senator Obama, and, uh, and whoever comes out of it, their case could be made, will be, will be quite strong, because they've had to wither this long campaign, and Senator McCain at the, at the same time has taken a relatively easy road. So uh, it, it'll be an interesting battle. I think, though, uh, that what I'm most excited to see, you know, down the, down the stretch here, is this, is this debate, not only on national security issues and the, and the war, but also on the economy because uh, but, but, despite what Paul says, I think that Senator McCain does have some good credentials and he's the only candidate, I would remind you, who's taken an aggressive uh, uh, stand against wasteful government spending and uh, wants to reform entitlements. I haven't heard much talk of, uh, of that among the Democrats.